Two households, both alike in dignity, in fair Verona, where we lay our scene. From ancient grudge break to new mutiny, where civil blood makes civil hands unclean. Within the halls of this institution, a pair of star-crossed lovers take their life, whose misadventured, piteous overthrows do with their death bury their parents' strife. The fearful passage of their death-marked love and the continuance of their parents' rage, which but their children's end naught could remove, is now the one-hour traffic of our stage. The which, if you with patient ears and eyes attend, what here shall miss, our toil shall strive to mend. Gregory, oh my word, look not carry cult. No, for then we should be collier. I mean, if we be collier, we'll draw. Hi, <laughs> while you live, draw your neck out on the collar. I strike quickly being moved. Thou art not quickly moved to strike. A dog of the house of Montague moves me. To move is to stir, and to be valiant is to stand. Therefore, if thou art moved, thou runnest away. The dog of the house shall move me to stand. I will take the wall of any man or maid of Montague's. The quarrels between our masters and us their men. Control thy tool. Here comes to the house of the Montague's. My naked weapon is that quarrel all back to you. How? Turn thy back and run? Fear me not. No, Mary, I fear thee. Let us take the law of our sides. Let them be. I will frown as I pass and let them take it as they like. Nay, as they dare, I will bite my thumb at them, which is a disgrace to them if they bear it. Do you bite your thumb at us, sir? I do bite my thumb, sir. Do you bite your thumb at us, sir? It's a law of our sides if I say I. No. No, sir, I do not bite my thumb at you, sir, but I bite my thumb. Sir! Do you quarrel, sir? Quarrel, sir? No! Sir. If you do, sir, I am for you. I serve as good a man as you. No better. Well, sir. Say better, here comes one of my master's kingsmen. Yes, better, sir. You lie. Draw, you be mad at Fools, put up your swords. You know now what you do. What? Art thou drawn among these heartless? Hines, turn me, Benvolio, look upon thy death. I do but keep the peace. Put up thy sword, or manage it, to part these men with me. What drawn and talk of peace? I hate the word, as I hate hell, all Montague's and peace. Have at thee, coward. Ooh. Amazed, but he was aware of me and stole into the covert of the wood. 
I, measuring his affections by my own, that are most busy when they are most alone, pursued my humor and not pursuing his, and gladly shun his gladly fled from me. <sighs> Many a morning hath he there been seen, with tears augmenting the fresh morning dew, adding to clouds more clouds with his deep sighs. But all so soon as the all cheering sun should in the furthest east begin to draw the shady curtains from Aurora's bed, away from the light steals home my young brother, and private in his chamber pens himself, shuts up his windows, locks far daylight out, and makes himself an artificial night. Black and portentous must this humor prove, unless good counsel may the cause remove. My noble cousin, do you know the cause? I neither know it nor can learn of him. Have you important him by any means? Both by myself and many other friends. But he, his own affections counselor, is to himself, I will not say how true, but to himself so secret and so close, so far from sounding and discovery, as is the bud bit with an envious worm. Ere he can spread his sweet leaves to the air, or dedicate his beauty to the sun. Could we but learn from whence the sorrows grow, we would as willingly give cure as no. See, where he comes. So please you, step aside. I'll know his grief and sore be much denied. I would, thou wert so happy by thy state, to hear true striped. No matter, let's away. The day so young. But new struck nine. I <sighs> mean, sad hours seem long. Was that my sister that went head so fast? It was. What sadness lengthens Romeo's hours? Not having that, which having makes them short. In love? Hours. Of love? Out of her favor, where I am in love. Alas, that love so gentle in its views should be so rough and tyrannous and proof. Alas, that love he he was muffled still should with thine eyes see pathways to his will. Where do I? Oh me, what brave was here? Yet yeah, tell me not, for I've heard it all. Here's much to do with hate, but more with love. Why then, O oh, brawling love, O oh, loving hate, O oh, anything of nothing first create? O oh, heavy likeness, serious vanity, misshapen chaos of well-seeming forms, feather of lead, bright smoke, cold fire, sick health, still waking sleep, that is not what it is. This love I feel, that feel no love in this. Dost thou not laugh? No, cuz. I rather weep. Good heart, at what? At thy good heart's oppression. Why, such is love's transgression. Griefs of mine own lie heavy in my breast, which thou wilt propagate to have it pressed. With more of thine, this love that thou hast shown, doth add more grief to much of mine own. Love is a smoke raised with the fume of sighs, being purged, a fire sparkling in lovers' eyes, being vexed to see nourished with lovers' tears. Oh. What is it else? A madness most discreet, a soaking gall and a preserving sweet. Farewell, my cousin. Soft! I will go along, and if you leave me so, you do me wrong. Oh, Tut, I have lost myself. This is not Romeo. I am not here. He's some other where. Tell me in sadness. Who is that to love? Oh, what shall I groan and tell thee? Groan? Why, no, but sadly, tell me who. Bid a sick man in sadness make his will. Ah, uh, word ill urged to one that is so ill. In sadness, cousin, I do love a woman. I ain't so near when I suppose you love. A right good mark, man, and she's fair, I love. A right fair mark for a cousin soon is ticked. Well, in that hit you miss, she'll not be here with Cupid's arrow, for she hath Diane's wit and, and strong proof of chastity well armed. And from love's child, childish weak bow, she lives unharmed. She will not stay the siege of loving terms, nor by the encounter of assailing eyes, nor ope her lap to sink seducing gold. She is rich in beauty, only poor that when she dies, with beauty dies her store. Then she hath sworn that she shall still live chaste. She hath, and in that sparing makes huge waste. For beauty starved with her severity, cuts beauty off from all posterity. Oh, she is too fair, too wise, wisely too fair, to merit bliss by making me despair. She hath sworn to love, and in that vow, do I live dead that lives to it now. Be ruled by me. Forget to think of it. Oh, teach me how I should forget to think. By giving liberty into thine eyes, examine other beauties. Tis the way to call hers exquisite and question more. These happy masks that kiss fair ladies' brows, being black put us in mind they hide the fair. He that is struck and blind cannot forget the precious treasure of eyesight lost. 
Show me a mistress that is passing fair, where I may read, but as a note to pass it, I have to go. Oh, farewell, my cousin. Thou canst not teach me to forget. I'll pay that doctor, or else die in debt. <laughs> The measure done, I'll watch her place of stand, and touching hers may blessed my rude hand. Oh, did my heart love till now, but forswear its sight, for I never saw true beauty until this night. If I profane find my worthiest hand, the holy shrine, the gentle find is this. My lips, two blushing programs ready stand to smooth that rough touch with a tender kiss. Good pilgrim, you do wrong your hand too much, which mannerly devotion shows in this. For saints have hands that pilgrim's hands do touch, palm to palm and holy palmer's kiss. Have not saints lips and holy palmer's too? Aye, pilgrim, lips that they must use in prayer. Oh, then, dear saint, let lips do what hands do. They pray, grant thou, and let faith friend to despair. Saints do not move, no grant for prayer. They move not while my prayers are like I do. Thus for my lips, by yours, my sin is purged. Then when my lips the sin that they have done. Sin from my lips? Oh, trespass sweetly urged. Give me my sin again. You kiss my book. Madame, your sister craves a word with you. What is her sister? Capulet? Oh, dear account, my life is my foe's debt.
Juliet is the sun. Oh, arise, fair sun, and kill the envious moon who is already sick and pale with grief, that thou her maid art far more fair than she. Oh, be not her maid, since she is envious. Her vestal livery is but sick and green, and none but fools do wear it. Cast it off. Oh, it is my lady. Oh, it is my love. Oh, that she knew she were. She speaks, yet she says nothing. What of that? I discourses. I will answer it. Oh, I'm too bold. Tis not to me she speaks. Oh, see how she leans her cheek upon her hand. That I wear a glove upon that hand, that I might touch that cheek. I me. She speaks. Oh, speak again, bright angel. Thy name is my enemy. Thou art thyself, not a monster. 
I take thee at thy word. Call me with love, and I shall be new baptized. Henceforth, I can never will be Romeo. What man art thou that thus the screen ignites so stumblest upon my counsel? By your name. I know not to tell you who I am. My nature is a faithful to myself, because it is an enemy to me. Had I written, I would bear the word. My ears have not yet drunk a hundred words of that tongue's utterance yet. I know that thou. Art thou not Romeo? And Montague? Neither, fair Satan, neither be disliked. How came thou hither? Tell me, and wherefore? If any of my kinsmen find thee here, they receive thee, they will murder thee. <laughs> Alas, there lies more peril in thine eye than twenty of their swords. Look thou but sweet and I proof against their enmity. Have nice clothes to hide me from their sight. And but thou love me, let them find me here. My life were better ended by their hate than death for robes wanting of thy love. By whose direction found thou out this place? By love, who first did prompt me to inquire. He led me counsel, and I lent him eyes. Oh, I am no pilot, yet work thou as far as that wash shore, wash me far the sea. I would adventure for such merchandise.
Romeo, <laughs> <laughs> How Thou art aroused by some distemperature. Correct me, sir, permit me to say. Or Romeo has not been to class today. That last is true. God pardon sin. What's that with Rosaline? With Rosaline, my esteemed tutor? No. I forgot that name and that name's low. That's my good son, but where hast thou been then? I'll tell thee, ere thou askest me again. I have been speaking with mine enemy, for on a sudden she hath wounded me, that spy me wounded. I fear no patriots, school teacher, for lo, my intercession likewise deads my foe. Be plain, my son, and homely in thy drift. Riddling confession brings but riddling shrift. Then plainly know my heart's dear love is set on the fair daughter of the rich Capulet. As mine on her, so hers is set on mine. We met, we wooed, and made exchange a vow. I'll tell thee this as we pass, but this I pray, ultimately we marry one. Holy St. Francis, what a change is here! Is Rosaline, who thou did love so dear, so soon forsaken? Young men's love then lies not truly in their hearts, but in their eyes. Jesu Maria, what a deal of brine has washed thy sallow cheeks for Rosaline. How much salt water thrown away in waste to season love that of it doth not taste. Thy old groans ring yet in my ancient ears. Lo, upon thy cheek a stain doth sit of an old tear that's not washed off yet. Oh, and art thou changed? Pronounce this sentence then. Women may fall where there's no strength in men. Thou chidest me out for loving Rosaline. For doting, not for loving people by it. And badst me very love. Not in a grave to have one in, another out to have. I pray thee, chide not. She whom I love now doth grace for grace and love for love allow. The other did not so. She knew well your love did read by rote and could not spell. But perhaps this alliance may someday prove to turn thy household's rancor to pure love. Oh, let me hence. I stand on some haste. Wise men slow, they stumble that run fast. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lunch time. <laughs> This is also pretty much going to be our intermission, so you can talk now. But as soon as we get back in the cafeteria, please Yes, guys, feel free speaker. to talk um, leading to the cafeteria. But once you're back in the cafeteria, the show will go on. Look at this as your intermission of life. And again, sharing is caring with the text messaging.
Couple it with something. Make it a word in the flow. You shall find me apt enough to do that, girl. And you will give me an occasion. Could you not take some occasion without giving? Mercutio, thou consorts with Romeo. Consorts? What? Dost thou make us minstrels? And make minstrels of us look to hear nothing, nothing but discords. Here's my fiddlestick, here's that shall make you dance. Come, consorts? We talk here in the public haunt of men. Either withdraw into some private place, and coldly reason of your grievances, or else depart. Here, all eyes gaze on us. Men's eyes were made to look, and let them gaze. I will not budge for no man's pleasure, I. Peace be with you, lady. Here comes my man. Romeo, the haste I bear thee can afford no better terms than this. Thou art a villain. Well, the reason that I have to love thee doth much excuse thee, appertaining rage to such a greeting. Villain I am not, I see thou knowest me not. Boy, this does not ensue the injuries that thou hast done thee, therefore turn and draw. I do protest, I never injured thee, but love thee more than thou canst devise till thou shalt know the reason of my love. And so good captain, which name I tender as dearly as my own, be satisfied. Oh, come I wrote God's division, too! You rat catch you when you walk? What? What is that? I would have you back nothing but one of your nine lives. That I mean, you may go with the cause, you shall use me hereafter. Drive me the rest of the eight. Will you pluck your soul from the bitch by the ears? Make haste! Leave mine, be about the ears, air me out! I am for you! Gentle Mercutio, put thy rapier off! Hold Tibble! Good Mercutio! This lady, the princess near ally, hath got her mortal hurt in my behalf. Alive in triumph, and Mercutio slain, away to heaven, respect and lenity, and fire-eyed fury be my conduct now. Now, Tibble. Take the villain back and that lay down gave us me, for Mercutio's soul is but a little way above our heads, saying we're not to keep her company, and either thou or I or both must go with her. Thou wretched boy that didst console her here, shout with her hate. This shall determine that. Where are the 
trial beginners of this fray. Devon! My cousin! Oh, the blood is spilled! Oh, my dear kinsman! Prince, as thou art true, for blood of our shed, blood of mine of you! Oh, cousin, cousin! Benvolio! Who began this bloody fray? Until we get to the bottom of this, Verona High is hereby on lockdown. in the auditorium, please. Everybody, let's go. Auditorium. Thank <laughs> you. 
tell Juliet. How is it with her? Does she not take me an old murderer and now I have seen the childhood of our joy? Love removed the little of her own. Where is she and how doth she and what says my concealed lady to our canceled love? Why does she not answer? Why no reply? Is it even so? Is it even so? Get me ink and paper. Get me ink and paper. Shush, thou art deceived. Leave me and do the thing I bid thee do. Yet, my lady, I will lie with thee tonight. My lady, I will lie with thee tonight. Let's see for means. Oh, mischief, thou art swift to enter into the thoughts of desperate men. I do remember an apothecary, hereabout he dwells, which late I noted, tattered weeds and overwhelming brows, culling of simples, meager were his looks. Sharp misery had worn him to the bones, and in his needy shop, a tortoise hump, an alligator stuffed in other skins of ill-shaped fishes, and about his shelves, a beggarly account of green earthen pots, bladders, and musty seeds. Remnants of pack thread and old cakes of roses were thinly scattered to make up a show. Noting this penury, to myself I said, if a man did need a poison now whose sale is present death in Mantua, here lives a cater fresh with Celadon. Oh, that same thought did but forerun my need, and this same needy girl must sell it. Okay. <laughs> what ho! Apothecary! You call so loud. Come hither, girl. I see that thou art poor. Hold. There is forty dollars. Let me have a dram of poison, such soon speeding gear as will disperse itself through all the veins that the life we retaker may fall dead, and that the trunk may be discharged of breath as violently as hasty powder fire. Such mortal drugs I have, but Mantua's law is death to any he that utters them. Art thou so barren, full of wretchedness and fierce to die? Famine is in thy cheeks, need and oppression starveth in thine eye. Contempt and beggary hangs upon thy back, O. Oh, the world is not thy friend, nor the world's law. The world affords no law to make thee rich. Then be not poor, but break it and take this. My poverty, but not my will, consents. I pay thy poverty, and not thy will. <clears throat> Put this in any liquid thing you will, and drink it off. And if you had the strength of twenty men, it would dispatch you straight. There is thy gold. Worse poisons to men's souls, doing more murders in these lonesome compounds that thou mayst not sell. Farewell. Buy food, get thyself in flesh. Come cordial and not poison. Go with me to Juliet's grave, for there I must use thee.
bargain to engrossing death. Come, bitter conduct. Come, unsavory guy. Here's to my love. Romeo. No. 
Romeo? Romeo? Romeo, please! Come! Come! Come to me! Please! Please! What's here? Come! Come! Close! You met your lips, hand. Romeo, Juliet bleeding, warm and newly dead, and Romeo, who else? Paris too? Oh, what an unkind hour is guilty of this lamentable chance. See what a scourge is laid upon your hate? That heaven finds means to kill our joys with love. We, we see the ground upon which these woes do lie. Look, and thou shalt see. All are punished it. All are punished it. <laughs> <laughs> 